Hello and welcome back to another brand new video. In today's video we will have episode 3 of the tips and tricks series. In this video I will be covering the whole topic of setups, how to set up a bike, what setup works well in certain conditions and tracks and just explain in as much detail as possible the setups on this game and what they do. So before I get into manual setups I will just give a quick shout out to guided setup. Now, as you can see on track, if you go into guide or setup, it gives you, it asks you where's your issues. Now it does, it is quite basic, but it can work in certain situations. If you're really struggling with one aspect, try this out, see if you like it. You learn as well, because if you say, we'll just go for example, braking, it's doing a stoppy. If you apply the changes, you'll see just on the screen and it does all the bits that will in real life stop, stop the stoppy in this case. But in some cases I find it doesn't work as well. So I don't know, I never use it. I always prefer to go down my own route, experiment with setups and make my own ones. But anyway, let's get into the manual setups. And I'm gonna start with basically gonna go from the top to the bottom, explain them one by one. And then at the end, I'll kind of give examples of certain issues you can have the bike and setups I personally would go with to counteract them. So first we have the tires. Now it could easily be looked over, overlooked the tires. A soft tire gives best performance for the shortest amount of time. Hardest tire gives the least amount of performance, but it does for longer. It's not as simple as that. For example, front tire, very important. A soft tire is great if you're on a one lap and you're trying to get everything, trying to get every inch in the braking zone, brilliant. Can you do that for eight, nine, 10, 11 laps? No, you'll have to go for a medium or hard, especially you will find that in heavy braking zones, a soft tire will move around and kind of squish it. It's a bit, I find, on this game it's not too bad gp20 i found that the soft front was too soft and it was spongy and that even on a hot lap i couldn't use it because it was just too soft it was it didn't really give me any confidence so I, I actually found out a lot of my hot laps were done with a hard front because i had a bit more stability now i didn't have the edge grip but it didn't move around as much on the edge being a stiffer compound and i got a better result now in this game a medium is a great tire the soft is a good tire but like I said, if you're trail breaking into a heavy braking zone and you're getting into the apex or it's downhill or any stressful kind of deep braking zone, you will really heat the edges of the tyre up. And on a soft, they stay quite warm and by the end of a hot lap, you can completely have it destroyed. And your last sector, you'll be losing time because you won't have optimal tyre performance. So I always start with a medium in when I'm doing setups I have a medium front software now if it's a race situation I like a hard front I like a stable front I like being able to abuse the front and have it take it not overheat and last have a consistent performance throughout a 15 lap race if I'm doing a league race example now moving on to the rear the rear is a bit more simple because with a rear you're, you're spinning the bike up so you're using a lot of the grip which means uh, one lap soft perfect a brilliant edge grip it will drive out of the corner you can spin it again it'll overheat it will give you it'll give you great initial grip but if you overheat it it's kind of the more good again one lap pace one lap qualifying time trial this is your man a race a medium is still a bit it, it gives you very good performance a medium but it still will wear quite quickly our uh, tire again gives you great stability in a, a, in a long race don't be afraid to go for the hard tires because of the lack of performance they will stand to you for the whole race and you you will find that late in the race if someone ahead of you is on a softer tire the edge grip they lose you'll have so much more confidence you will it might take a couple of laps to get up to speed on hard because they do kind of take a, a lap or two to kind of really kind of you have to nearly scrub them in a bit on this game to get a good feeling with them whereas a soft will work first sector you will be on it whereas a hard you might need a lap or so just to get up to speed so with the tyres covered, I'm now going to move on to suspension. Your suspension on a bike is split into two. It's your bread and butter really for setups. You have in, you see the picture there, you have your front forks, which is in this game the class as front swing arm, which is a lot. If you'd see actually as well, it does, shows there for each category, it gives a description. You can read these. They are understandable, but they are translated from Italian milestone or Italian company. So they obviously have an Italian technician or a GP mechanic that's Italian who gives them a brief description and then they translate it English because some of it doesn't always the wording isn't great so it can be quite confusing so I'm going to go through them individually and give you my my take on them and explain them in my own words so it'll be easier but they call it again going back to it they call it front swing arm it's your front forks you see the picture there you have two front forks in your bike and your rear single shock absorber is just your rear shock and you can see in the picture there that's what it is so 
starting at the top with your preload. Your preload determines the height of your bike. So if you go for a really low preload, just like that, your front of the bike will be really low. So your base shock kind of setting will be quite low. If you go fully like that, it'll be very high. You'll have a kind of a, a rake, a bike that leans back, puts it'll transfer weight. So you need to think of a bike as like has two pogo sticks. If you extend one, you kind of compress the other. So you need to kind of keep them balanced. Usually with these, I leave them alone at first with a setup I'll can leave the preload alone because the preload will affect your turning as well. A lower front will turn better, a higher rear will have more oversteer but you lose edge grip and vice versa. A higher front will understeer but you'll have much more you'll have very good braking performance, the bike will be stable. A lower rear will give you great kind of initial acceleration but it mightn't turn mid corner. So again it's a with setups it's always a give and take. You're either compromising one aspect to gain another but there's always a benefit if you're if you're going about a setup and you're only going slower you mean you've done something wrong it means you've compromised in two areas and you haven't got gained anything so you need to play around with setups to where you can find that you're benefiting as much as possible and have as little drawbacks so we'll move on to the oil quantity the oil quantity leads directly to the front forks your front forks have oil in them that determines how much they travel up and down a high oil quantity like I have on screen would mean that as soon as you get on the brakes, the fork, soon their initial compression, they won't travel very far. So they'll get on it and they'll feel very stiff immediately. A very low oil quantity will have the opposite effect. You'll have lots of travel up and down your fork. So you'll have, it can affect your wheelie too because when you're accelerating, taking the weight off it, the front forks can extend out and lift. And in braking, you're pitching the bike forward, you'll have a lot of fork travel, so the front of the bike will dig down a lot. Now in real life, a fork that digs down too much, you'll end up bottoming out. Now I'll come to that again in front stiffness as well with the front the front uh, forks, but just with the oil quantity, if you bottom out in real life, the game doesn't kind of really get it realistically enough in this, but if you bottom out, you will basically have no front suspension at that time you'll lose your front grip and it can all a lot of times result in a crash you'll bottom out your front forks you'll end up on the bump stops you lose all your performance in the front and it can be very it can be detrimental you can nearly instantly crash but as we move on to the front spring hardness now this again is like the oil quantity you can stiffen it up and soften it up now again like in real life they wouldn't run it as extreme as having a very very soft because it, like i said it will bottom it out but on this game for some reason whatever way it works a very soft front spring can really increase the likeliness of keeping the rear stable under heavy braking so braking and heavy braking is always a Qatar turn one Mugello turn one all them kind of hard sixth gear 210 miles an hour braking zones a very soft front spring can actually keep the bike quite stable now the physics behind it don't exactly work because in real life you'd have you bottom out the front forks and you would overload the front tire and the front tire would start to skip across the ground now in the game they haven't simulated that because it'd be quite hard to simulate that but that's nearly like the meta setup at the moment is to run as on this build before they've patched so they haven't done any patches to the physics as of yet it's only been little minor ones for other aspects of the game but as of right now the physics are exactly the same as they were at launch so maybe in six months time this as i say meta mightn't work at all it might be completely wrong it might change it overall at all together but as of right now a very soft front spring hardness is the way to go to stable out the bike now if you look here the front swing arm compression extension this again is through to travel the extension and compression is like i said if it's very stiff how much compression so you won't be able to push it down very far a lot of these you so basically all of these will affect the bike's behavior under braking. Now the preload will affect it, how much it wants to turn, and your ed your very edge grip, when you're leaned over at 60, 65 degrees, that's what the preload will affect, whereas these will affect how much weight transfer load there is, how much you're leaving the tire to its work, if you're overloading the tire. Now it tends to be better to go soft in this game, so I would recommend bringing, especially the hardness and the compression down, so you have a lot of weight transfer to the front, even though it sounds counteractive, because you think weight transfer, it's going to lift the rear, it, it kind of balances out, but we'll move on to extension, that's again, the same as the preload, if you have a very high front, it will have a kind of a bouncy long extension, front swing arm, you can change it, and it'll, these are all to be changed incrementally of each other, they need to be changed together, so that your, if you, let's say, do this and do that and do that it's going to be all over the place you're, you're counteracting yourself you need to kind of do them together to get the right balance so a lot of these setups 
will take a lot of working out yourself you're, you're not going to just be able to whack down the front preload and the bike will be half a second faster you'll have to play around them each track is different your, your own riding style comes into it pretty much as well just whatever you everyone breaks different accelerates corners different everyone has slightly different lines and a whole setup there might be two things that people have in simulator but it'll just it'll be all different you're gonna have to make your own ones so as much as people include myself put up the hot lot videos with setups them setups always are going to be slightly different for someone else they're always going to feel slightly different to me to the, to the rest of the people that watch them or try them but anyway a bit of blabbering i'm going to move on to the rear shock the rear shock is very similar now obviously it affects the rear of the bike so this is more instead of braking it's more acceleration so rear preload is exactly the same as the front it affects how much the the rear of the bike goes up or down so rear preload if it's slammed down your rear will sit quite low it'll be good for braking accelerating won't want to turn very well if you think of the bike the bike will kind of squat when it comes out of the corner it will give you great grip slightly overheat a softer tire a bit harder it'll just put it kind of put more load through it but it will be very good for corner exit and braking higher one more kind of turning it'll it'll higher preload will lean on the tire more on the higher lean angles and you get better cornering might pump a bit at the rear you might need to run a higher traction again play around with them you'll never know what you find the setups my explanation explanations here are what they should be doing they don't always do what they they're meant to do for going back to the example of the, the front spring hardness being super soft that shouldn't really work but it does it's just it's finding these little things like that and just seeing what they do for you because you never know it just it setups are something very unique to everyone that's why i started with the guide one because some people might not want to spend 45 minutes riding around texas trying to find the right front end suspension setup for them because not everyone has that time not everyone has that much interest that's why i'm making this video to make it a bit more we we'll say simplistic so people can understand and just be able to change it without having to ride for 45 minutes to realize all right the front forks are bottoming out they're too stiff the bike doesn't turn the bike turns too much i can't control it whatever I, this video is meant to be able to explain it so that i've done 10 minutes i understand what the bike isn't doing i'll change this this should fix it and then go from there so again rear spring hardness stiffens the rear shock high low it's as simple as that really a stiff rear shock like i said with the preload a stiffer rear shock will push the tire harder into the ground giving more grip but if it spins it'll start to pump because it's basically pushing the tire into hard a soft one again I'd always go for a hard shock in the rear, basically. So when I'm transferring weight forward and heavy braking, I'll come onto this LED compression and extension. They're quite similar with the rear shock hardness. A stiffer one will kind of keep the rear planted under braking. I'd much rather a stiffer than a softer. So I'll always recommend going a bit stiffer with these. But to go back, what happens if you're softer? They're a bit more spongy. It'll move a lot around under braking. The rear tire won't be as settled. Again, it can give you in colder conditions can keep the tire warm because it'll kind of work the tire a lot when it's kind of bouncing up and down and it's putting a lot of load through the rear tire. But I always tend to go for a stiffer one. So now we're moving on to the vehicle geometry. Now this has a lot to do with pushing your wheels away from each other. So your wheelbase is this is what this is affecting. Now changing your wheelbase will change how your bike handles. So if you're very aggressive bike, so we'll, we'll give the Honda as an example a bike that. In direction changes gets tied up the knots it coming out of the corner wants to pump at the rear it's all over the place under braking change of direction it's completely un un unrideable this is where you'll come to this is if i have a bike that's unrideable this is where it'll come to first so your steering head inclination you can see the little picture there it shows the your front fork set up with your tire and your disc your steering head inclination and your trail pushing these out so you can see in the picture you have a little a little um angle diagram there you push the steering head inclination it's so your basically where your forks are the very top of your forks your headstock it changes the angle which in turn changes the angle of the bottom of the shock which pushes the front wheel further away from the engine of the bike which means you have the, it's like more like a chopper if you go like that if you put it maxed out so if you think of like a chopper really high handlebars the front wheels quite a far away a bit away from the, the rest of the bike and it'll make the bike slower in direction changes slightly i wouldn't say it's cumbersome but it'll be that kind of heading that way if you kind of max out all these you'll have a very stable bike it'll be a bit slower but it'll be stable and i think a lot of people will find a stable bike will be easier to ride and it might it might be as quick 
but they might be able to ride at a more consistent pace and that's what they can find will be better the trail is the same thing pushes the front wheel out further changes the angle of it again same thing makes it further out makes the bike a lot more stable if you bring it in like that you're bringing the front wheel under the nose of the bike we'll say it makes the bike change direction faster makes the bike quite aggressive naturally the honda from standard is quite we'll say kind of trail in the front end the front forks are quite not a lot of angle on them and has a lot of kind of a tank slapper moment you'll have a lot of change in direction it will feel nervous under braking likes to move around so moving on to your steering plate position your rear swing arm length again all this does now it doesn't show your rear swing arm it just shows your front forks your steering plate position and your rear swing arm increasing these will push your rear wheel further back in the swing arm what that will do is under braking You'll have less load transfer, which means it won't be an as aggressive pitch on the front, so the rear shouldn't kick as much. I run these like this on most setups just because it gives the bike a good stability under braking and it kind of in between changes direction, it kind of doesn't slow the bike down as much. I'd find it just keeps it stable and I can ride it a bit more aggressive. So just going back to the steering plate position and swing arm. If you push that out, you'll have a bit more of a, a lazy rear end, is what I call it. It won't be as nice coming out of a corner. You might like at a high like marcus said a couple of years ago and it, it kind of it's true to this game he said he wanted the fastest bike not the best bike and at the time a lot of people said well isn't that the same thing and he said no the fastest bike isn't the easiest one to ride the best bike is the easiest bike to ride and people were like well why would you want the fastest bike and not the easiest one to ride because he goes i can get the best out of the bike so when it comes to a hot lap if a bike is unstable that's not really a bad thing it means you're getting the most out of it you're riding it at the limit if you're doing a 12 lap race you don't want a bike that's nervous and hard to ride because chances are you're not mark Marquez. you're not going to be able to ride it on the limit for for 20 25 minutes you'll be able to do it for two minutes and 90 seconds just to get a maximum out of a qualifying lap so play around with these change the wheelbase of the bike you'll find it makes a big difference in the just to change the direction the braking acceleration it doesn't really affect how much the bike turns as much that's more down to the preload but these are quite handy for especially these are nearly the first things i adjust if i struggle with braking if the bike is a bit unstable these would be my go-to <clears throat> so now on to transmission now this affects your gearbox so you can see i have all my gears here first through to sixth and then your pinion which is your final gear so your sprocket and your slipper clutch which is new for this year i'll come to that last so individually you can adjust each gear what that will do if i go like that max it out it's going to be a very very short gear so if i go so i might i might max rev out at 60 miles an hour when it's at four i put it to eight it might be 50 56 miles an hour, so i lose four miles an hour but in theory i should hit the 56 faster so that's your trade-off so you'll have to change gear quicker and more often but you should get to higher speeds faster that's the whole point of increasing or it'll be shortening your gears by increasing it out it's the same with each one now always i start out so the, on this game the final ratio is four because it's in the set in the middle but it's quite long so the gear it's very long gear so you you can you if you probably had the long enough straight you could hit 225 230 miles an hour quite comfortably with the base setup so i always shorten it just because it makes it a lot easier out of the box just have a bike that's a bit more responsive and turned on out of a corner just wants to accelerate so i always would as soon as i start even at like Mangello, Qatar, long straights i go as a six as out of the box I wouldn't go as far as eight i go six and start there if i still feel that six gear, like you like six gear at four here six gear is nearly useless most tracks you can get 200 miles an hour to fifth gear at nearly on any bike at any track so you don't need a six gear to for an extra 30 miles an hour because you're not going to hit 230 miles an hour anywhere in this game you don't have that straight long enough in this game so always start six sacrifice with a top speed because you're not going to use it and you'll gain everything else in the track now shortening your gears does come with a bit of a drawback a longer gear bike is nice in the corner because it has much more of a steady acceleration so the bike might flow through a corner it'll be nicer when the bike is on the side of the tire when it has less kind of short gears being more aggressive it'll upset the bike's flow and rhythm you'll be able to take a smoother line on a, a shorter sorry not shorter a smoother line and a more consistent line if you have longer gears but you do sacrifice on corner entry and exit just like the way the honda rides compared to yama in real life it's, it's the same in the game so what you can counteract with that is if you go to a seven we'll say for 
Hereth and you're finding I'm only hitting six gear, I don't need it, shorten it down. Soon as you hit six gear, if you shorten out, it will fly through the revs and you'll be on the rev limiter within no time. So a setup like this would be quite common and having kind of a sort of increasing the uh, acceleration and then decreasing it as you get up so that you have a lot of pull and you'll have in the higher gears you really it'll want to fly up through the gears and get up to top speed now the only thing is you want to be careful is that if you're in a league race or an online race you don't want to be shortening your gears so that you're bottom out at the back of the you're revving out at the end of the straight because if you have a bit of slipstream you could find that you might hit your rev limiter in sixth before you get to your braking zone and you'll notice if it ever happens the bike just hits the limiter it won't go any faster and you will lose massively in coming into the braking zone you will just lose distance to the rider in front so always play around with this in time trial before making a setup and always make sure you still have an extra five seven miles an hour in to the braking zone before it revs out and that you know then will cover you through any slipstream you get moving out your slipper clutch this is works in in sequence with your engine braking so your slip it's just your clutch it's just a slipper clutch is what a motorbike has all these gp bikes have it when you're going, say you're coming into a heavy braking zone and you're going back to gear as fast, the slipper clutch basically blips the clutch. It pushes the plates away from each other to disengage the so the engine stops so it can rev higher. It's the basically the action is if you're on a street bike, we'll say a normal road bike, and you, as you change down using the clutch, if you just bring the clutch in just enough just to kind of drop the revs, that's all your slipper clutch does. If you have it really high, it doesn't do very much. It leaves the bike rev as much as possible. It basically has very little involvement. If you want it really low, it cuts in any time there's a bit of wheel spin if it over revs under heavy braking zones. The only thing with this is the higher you run it, the better braking you'll have, but the more unstable the bike will be. The lower you run it, the better stability you'll have, but you won't have much of a... It'll, it'll cut out a lot of your engine braking. So you need to... Again with this, I ran at 8. I find it is usable at 8. It's not terrible my base at the moment is around a three or five depending so i just go one either side of the middle mark now again it takes a lot of playing because each bike feels different every track's a bit different depends if you have a soft rear tire in a hard if you're on a qualifying lap or race totally different situations again so we'll move on to the brakes now this has been overhauled for this game so you have you can see your four front brake discs now the good thing about this it will always give you a recommended setup as it does for actually everything so if i go back to suspension you can see in the bottom left side of your screen it says set recommendations if i'm just going to put it on and it did nothing i don't think nope did nothing for me for now i don't know why but if i go back to the main menu and set recommendations setup if i want to set up it is okay you can see it's increased these two transmission so it's adjusted the final gears i'm at Assen, so this is the so you can see it's done all these so the game gives you a pre-made setup and i'm just going to reset the default just back to normal just so when i go to the brakes i can give you an example you'll always have your light bulb up there as a recommended one now you have as i've gone through this already in my breaking uh, breaking tips and tricks video each disc has a high mask and a regular mask and there's two so there's two different discs a 13 and a 12 inch high mass and low mass you have that's all there is a high mass will take more heat so it'll take longer to get to full heat but it'll also take longer to cool down a smaller disc provides less braking performance so in th these two here are your strongest braking discs but they are the longest to heat up so if you have a, a track where you've only one or two braking zones short track a sack string run the 12 inch disc you'll have a lot more you'll have your brakes at optimal temperature for longer and you'll get a better lap time out of it if you're running it we'll say our um austria spielberg these are your men here heavy heavy braking zones in turn one turn three turn four you're constantly on the brakes on that track you always need the best braking performance and these personally my favorite is the 13 inch high mass because it'll take you can it's very hard to overheat it i find the other three including the 13 inch regular these two definitely on any regular track you can overheat them quite easily in a race i nearly go as a minimum go for the 13 the 12s now in wet conditions you could use these just because you'll get more heat they'll be constantly kind of warm you can see the bars that tells you what's the difference in heating and temperature but basically the higher mass the bigger the disc the more braking performance but the longer to take the heat up and cool down and as you go down it has the opposite effects less braking but it's more of a optimal window range it doesn't it's not hard to heat them up it doesn't hard to keep them there so you have all that rear brake exactly the same you have a seven inch steel and an eight inch steel they just have different trade-offs the higher 
the bigger inch one has just slightly longer to do a bit more and it's just it's just vice versa play around with them the rear brake I've never found I've had an issue with either of them. I have never noticed any difference with them. So play around, you might find a difference. I haven't personally. Now moving on to the last one, which is the ECU. Now, because it still has the recommended setup I was on three and five. So your traction up the top, when you open the throttle, if you have it on five, the bike won't spin at all. It will cut power. It will shut off certain cylinders to make the bike less, more, less powerful, have less power going to the rear wheel. The rear tire will drive forward and you will drive away. Is it the fastest way? No, because like I said, it's such off cylinders for your traction control, it'll basically cut power. These all, so anti-wheelie, power mapping and traction are all measures of cutting the power to adjust the bike coming into corners, going out of corners, just so it's better for the rider's feeling. So with high traction, it will cut power, stop the rear wheel from spinning, which means if you're on the edge of the tire and you're trying to steer the bike with the rear, spin it just to turn it. If you have tracks on five, it'll, it'll just feel like you've no power. It'll just keep kind of bogging as well. So if you know, if you go to the other end of it and go to one, as soon as you touch the throttle, you'll have all the rear power unharnessed on just raw and it will spin up. You will overheat your rear. Now there is a balance. My favorite is buying in the middle at three, three or two. Now two out of first gear hairpin, or even with a medium tire, it's very easy to spin up. And once you get it spinning, it's very hard to re can I keep the it overheats very quickly and it's hard to get it back down to temperature. So I usually stick with three. Now in the wet you can try four because again your wet conditions it's very it can like can snap on you and it'll it'll go a lot faster than in the dry. But my personal favourite I will say is three. Now engine braking is the same as like the simple clutch. A bike with heavy engine braking will pull the bike back on the brake and so when you come into a corner and brake the bike will be pulling back on the brake as you go back down through the gearbox the bike will slow down much quicker now higher engine brake means the rear wheel is more likely to lock which would be more unsettling for the rear of the bike it will start to to snake around and can lock up and double that up with a high slipper clutch and using rear brake you can easily throw yourself over the top of the bike have it off throttle high side because you've locked the rear so much now on the other hand if you have no engine braking it will be very easy to come into a corner break and run on into the corner so just to oh, oh break just to, so you could break at your same marker you with lower engine braking and you'll find just as you're tipping in the bike isn't pulling back the bike doesn't want to hold as it goes into the corner it will run on it will be more easy to tuck the front because when you have more engine brake the bike pulls back so it takes weight off the front and it's more stable in corners but then you have the issue with the rear now it's the opposite with the low engine brake your rear tire won't lock up at all it will feel great but your front tire is taking all the brute of the force of the bike trying to slow down so the weight's going all on the front it's very easy to crash now anti-wheelie hint is in the name it basically cuts out wheelies very high anti-wheelie as soon as you get a small wheelie it'll cut power the front will drop the bike will go the issue is when it cuts power it can be quite an aggressive power cut so that when you come out of a braking zone like we'll say Turn three at Magello is a good example. When you come up out of the on turn one out of San Donato and then left and right, just when you come out of there, when you accelerate, you, it, there's a habit of the bike wanting to wheelie. And when it does wheelie, the biggest issue is if you have high anti wheelie, it will cut power, you will lose drive. That's everything you, you want. You want optimal drive. You want to get out of the corner as best as possible without stressing your tires. On the other hand, a low anti wheelie. It won't cut the power but then you could wheelie for 50 yards out of the corner and if it, the bike can come back on top of you it will keep wheeling if there's a very low anti wheelie again my personal favorite is three just it gives you the best of both they're quite i i've you can go two. the only ratio i've run to by having a two is off the launch the bike does wheelie a lot so if you maybe run a three for like sector one and then bang it down to two that's kind of where you want to be but i find three works very well too now moving on to the last aspect of it is power this is just the same as other power three you have the bike is most optimized so it's most fuel deficient we'll say it's not it's dumping all the fuel in it wants to burn as much fuel it's running as rich as possible giving the bike as much horsepower as it can now if you're in a league race you're not always going to run in power three because you will burn through the fuel like i said it'll give the bike as much fuel as it wants it'll give it all the fuel when you ask for it and it will fly down through fuel in a, a racing situation two is better for a hot lap you want to keep it three just because you want the optimum power down the straights out of corners everywhere you want the most fuel 
in the wet a one is quite good because you want the little, least amount of power going to the rear so you don't want to spin it up you, a, run, a good thing to do in the wet is run the bike under fueled and then run power mapping one a lot because you have a lighter bike because you have less fuel in the bike you won't need as much because if you're running a low power map you won't use as much so you'll be able to get away with it to the finish and you'll have a better tire life and you'll, you'll have actually better traction out of the corner it's like running your own traction control as well as the traction control so i said at the start of the video i'd give my own ideas if you had if there was certain aspects i'd give my kind of take on it so i'm my first one i'm going to do is if you have a bike that stoppies into a corner it's the biggest you're in this game my personal favorite would be something along the lines of this so lower the front preload lower the front spring hardness so bottom them completely out and then increase the rear hardness to about a six or seven and up the compression by two and then vehicle geometry max these all out that would make the bike great under braking for me anyway personally now you can play with your own brakes because again each track will have different brakes whereas this will kind of cover all tracks for braking it will improve your braking now it will make the bike a bit more sluggish in turning and getting into a corner and even the corner exit it can be like a sluggish but that's just to improve your overall braking the bike stability and you'll have a small bit of better braking performance now if you had a bike that you find doesn't turn you can't get a turn good thing to do is drop the preload soften up the front again have less compression less extension and just increase the rear preload so what you've done is you've made the front of the bike lower rear higher it'll make it oversteer you know you will have a snappy rear so again in a one a one hot, hot lap it can be great you'll be able to just ride on the limit you might get away with it you won't be able to ride a bike like this for a full 10 15 laps whatever it just will be quite difficult you will have a lot of rear end moments the bike won't be too good under braking it'll kind of be pitchy and it'll kind of have a little head shake a lot of time and you can like you it's it's rideable but it wouldn't be my ideal situation now and lastly i'm going to go for bike if you're struggling i'm just going to reset the setup if the bike is too soft and it's just bouncy and it's like we'll say you can, you're struggling with bumps what i'll do is I will completely take the oil out of the forks, drop the preload front and rear. So this is, we'll say this will be perfect for Texas. So spring hand is completely down. So I'm bottoming out everything at the front, bottoming out that. Then vehicle geometry, I'll max these out completely. And this bike will be incredibly stable. Now stable doesn't mean fast. As you, if you look at the Prilly a couple of years ago, they had a great stable bike. It was very easy to ride, I think in 2018 was it fast no it wasn't it was good in the mid race because it was a stable bike and it didn't use the tires but because it wasn't using its tires it wasn't fast enough so it's again like i said through the video multiple times in all my other videos it's a give and take you can have a great stable bike but stable doesn't mean fast you can have a fast bike but that doesn't mean you'll be able to ride it for more than a lap without coming off it so to recap play it around with setups yourself don't be afraid of them if you're conscious of you don't have enough time to get up to speed or temper like with the set up yourself use this fella your guided setup your race engineer they'll give you the they'll basically be what i'm after saying if you're going to do corners you can brake you can accelerate you can find all the things like that if you have little sub menus they'll give you rough estimates of what you need and what be good for what and it'll get you 70 percent of what you need now if you have the time and say you're league racing and you want to do hot laps and you want to do time trialing and all this go into a track pick a bike you like right around ideal what i do is how i come up to the setups i go medium medium i go for my i have like a, a meta i will say ec which would look like this so engine braking four anti wheelie three power mapping three like that ride the bike like that with medium medium base setup so everything in the middle and then go okay the gears are too long i need to shorten the gears go shorten the gears you'll, you'll find 0.2 of a second okay i'm after pointing 0.2 of a second now i'm coming into turn one the bike's snappy under braking. Into turn seven does the same. I'm gonna make the bike a bit more stable. All right, now it doesn't want to turn through turn three and four, but I'm stable in turn seven, turn one, and turn eleven. I'm after finding three tenths. Okay, so now I need to make the bike a little bit more kind of lively in the change of direction. Change that. Okay, I'm after losing a tent. Revert back and just keep going, and eventually you'll get the bike to a point where. You have to find the time and as as you go around you will get more up to speed with the track and you might actually go back and go well I, a while ago that worked for me i found 0.6 over my base setup pre-v but now i've gone back to a setup that i didn't like first but now i'm able to write it better because you get up as you go around the track more and more you'll start to kind of find 
different lines and you, you will find that the bike will work in different ways and don't throw away a setup after one lap if a bike feel different out of the box which it should with a different setup it's very easy to ride sector one go i don't like it it doesn't do what i want it to give it time give it time you'll be surprised how many times i've done a setup going, i don't like this i'm already over in point four in sector one then in sector two i'm, I'm after finding point four and back on and then i'm after finding time point two of a second and i'm up and then into the last sector but at turn one it doesn't want to do what i want in turn one but the rest of the track it's brilliant then you need to go in go slightly back to your older setup just to get more into sector one and just keep playing around it's just a, it's a balancing act of what you can do in certain aspects to get the bike to do what you want it's it is quite confusing it can be quite annoying because it doesn't always even though it is science it doesn't always act like science because what should work doesn't always work and what shouldn't work a lot of time does work <laughs> it is so that basically what i'm saying is what I, everything i said in this video is rubbish don't listen to it do what you want anyway to end it on that note don't forget as well you have the option to have a set recommended setup now i don't know who make them i've, I've heard that esports riders have made these setups so they should be pretty good i've used them they're okay they're a bit different to what i'd go but they do work they do make the bike slightly quicker if you just want a quick setup done you can look up hot laps i do plenty of hot laps i always give a setup after it so you'll have a setup there as well but if you want to make yourself i've given you all the tools in this video to understand what does what and how to change it and what you if you're struggling with certain aspects of the bike now you should know where you're looking to fix it and what you need to do to get the bike to react in the ways you like it so i'm going to end episode three here of the tips and tricks in the next one i'll be doing episode four i'll have online i'll be showing off basically talking a live com of online racing to demonstrate my live race um racecraft so i'll be explaining as i do it what i'm thinking of the riders in front riders behind what i'm planning what why i pick certain tires how i adjust my setup for each track and bike i'll probably do two or three races i'll probably have a straight i won't edit it at all just so you can get the raw cut of what i'm thinking at every second and uh, into turn one into the last corner if you're chasing someone down, what happens if you get taken out in turn one all these aspects so i should have that up now sometime next week towards the end of next week so look out for that once again i've taken up so much of your time thank you so much for watching if you found it useful at all please like and comment down below if you have any questions if anything in the video wasn't clear and i made it even more confusing probably did ask me anything in the comments i do not mind answering questions i actually like being asked questions because i like helping people and um, so yeah i'm gonna end it here i'm gonna take up no more of your time thank you so so much for watching i'll catch you all in the next video have a good day bye bye